Hi and welcome to this DCP Word tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the count if function in Microsoft Excel. Let's open up this folder and open up this spreadsheet. I've already put some test data in here. So you can see we've got a date, we've got a product type or a product, and we've got a cost to that product, right? So here you can see the products and they, you know, you've got coffee mug here, you've got it here, you've got it listed here and here. So you can see there's four um, entries for the coffee mug, for example. Now in the previous tutorials, we looked at the count function, the count a function, and the count if function we're going to look at today. But let's just quickly look at these two and explain them again. Let's just type in equals and count. And if you remember, the count function only works on numeric values. So if we double click in here and it's asking us for values, let's select these values and then close down the bracket here, close it down and hit enter. We should get 17 values, right? Because there's 17 entries here in this particular column. The first one we don't count because it's the headers, right? So there's 17 in total. And if we were to double click on this, and drag it over to text-based values. Remember, the count function only works on numeric values. So when we drag it to text entries and hit enter, we're going to get a null value. Count will only work on numeric values. So double click in here. Let's just drag it back over to here and hit enter. We'll get 17. The count a function. So when we type in count a or counter, and then we double click on the function here, this will calculate both text and numeric values. So it doesn't matter if it's got text or numeric inside of the cells, it's going to do the calculation. So if we select all of these text values and then close down the function with the bracket and hit enter, we're also going to get 17 value here. Yeah? So the count a function doesn't care whether it's got uh, numeric values in there, it's like numbers, it will still count it, right? Um, but if it's got text values, it will count them as well. But if I were to go to this column and type in, let's say, uh, the word test, this value here will turn to 16. You can see it's turned to 16 because test is not a numeric value, right? It's a text-based value. So that's the difference between count function and count a function or counter function. And now we're going to look at the count if. So if we type in equals count if and then double click, it's asking us for a range first. So the range will be the product name here. This is going to be the range and the criteria I've left a blank cell here. So it's going to be type. So if we close down this function and hit enter, uh, let's see, you've entered too few range arguments for this function. So let's see range. Okay, I made a mistake there. So let's click range and we need to select these values here first. Then we need to put in a comma and then we need to select this cell must put the comma in because that allows us to select the criteria. Now we can hit the enter key and we'll get a null value here. So what does this count if function do? If we were to select coffee mug or let's select a kitchen knife, let's control C to copy that value and paste it into here. We'll get the value of three because there is one kitchen knife, two and three here. So let's highlight them yellow. We can see there's three here. So what we can do with this, the count if function is to look at lots of data in a particular column and then we can find reoccurrences of that particular data, that particular piece of information, right? So that could be numeric value or text value. So we could find all the values that equivalent to the value of 12, for example. Maybe we'll look at that in a moment. But let's say we take frying pan and we cut and paste that into here. We've got three frying pans. So if we look carefully, we've got one here, we've got two here, and it's a little bit tricky to find the other ones, right? So we should have one, two, and here's three. So rather than hunting and visually looking through this data, we can use the count if function to find how many occurrences are of this particular value that we put in here. So let's highlight those ones to be, let's say, blue, for example, right? And you can take dish rack. And if I said to you, imagine if you've got 500 entries in here, and I said to you, now go and sit down and count how many dish racks are in here. How many times have we sold a dish rack? You're going to be there forever looking through 500 rows of data. This is a small data set, but imagine when you've got 1,000 or 2,000 or 500,000 entries of data, and you want to find out how many occurrences of a particular value, dish rack, for example. And we paste that into here, and we can see there's five in there. So we can see there's one, two, three, four, and there should be a five here, right? Let's make those green. And then we can do coffee mug. We know, I think there's four in here. There's four there, right? So let's click this one, this one, and this one, and there'll be another one here. And we can make those a different color. You don't need to highlight these colors. I'm just doing that to um, show the data. And dinner plate will only be two. We can easily see that there's two here, one and one here. That'll be two. And we can make those red, for example. 
right so that's how we use the count if function and although that you know this example is only a small data set in here we're only looking at you know 17 rows of data but when you start to look at maybe imagine if this was the sales for the whole year right or how many products did you sell of a certain type of product on a given day for a whole year you can imagine this data set would be much much bigger we're only looking at a few days here make this 365 days and then you'll all of a sudden see that it's quite difficult to manually calculate or count all of these entries use the countif function to do all of that hard work for you right coffee mug let's say frying pan cut and paste it in here three values one two three we can see them in there kitchen knife will be three values dish rack which should be like five right nice and easy let's save this uh, let's cancel that let's go ahead and save this so we've shown the count function just a basic example i've given you a previous tutorial on how to use the count function and a previous tutorial on how to use the count a function or counter function and now we're looking at the count if function here and how that works as well so i'll put some links in the youtube description showing you how all the other previous um in fact i'll just link straight to the the playlist of all my excel spreadsheet tutorials you can find lots of different tutorials in there some of them are quite long so i've done bookkeeping tutorials tutorials and lots of other advanced tutorials but for now I just want to go through lots of the basic functions in Microsoft Excel and explain them one by one so that you can go and use them to manipulate and examine data in the future let's save this work let's close down this folder let's close down this folder here and that's the end of this tutorial explaining how to use the count if function in Microsoft Excel hopefully you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial